Hi, my name's Phil. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be showing you the most efficient thing that the Mac OS offers in terms of business use. This saves you the most amount of time and in my opinion is by far the most important thing that it offers in terms of business efficiency. The Mac keyboard dictation feature is the thing that you really need to know if you want to start to save time in your business day. I'll also be showing you at the end of this video how to get hold of the list of the dictation commands that are going to be important for you and also how to teach your Mac how to spell special words that you might have in your business. So there'll be colloquialisms and weird spellings of words. I'll show you how to teach the Mac how to use those in the future. So without any further ado, let's now move on. So the first place you need to go is to the system preferences as I have here. So I'm in the system preferences and the place that we need to go is the keyboard area just highlighted there in the screen. So click on the keyboard option. This then leads you into this screen. So you can see me actually speaking in my microphone. I can select any microphone that's connected to the Mac, of course, here if I want to, because that's going to be important so that the uh, system can obviously hear what you're saying in order to be able to hear the dictation and, and convert that into text. So we can turn dictation on. Obviously, if you're coming to the, this for the first time, then it will be off, but turn it on. Then you can select the language. Now, the language is quite an interesting one because, of course, there are different ways of spelling in different languages. I tend to find that although I'm based in North America these days, I have English United Kingdom set in there because uh, I think it somehow recognizes my accent better that way. But if you wanted to add another language, you click on add a language and you can select, you know, United States and all of these, even Canada. Um, so wherever you are and whatever nationality you are, I, select, I suggest you select that particular nationality. Then you can select the shortcut that you want to use to, in, to actually invoke the dictation functionality. We don't want it to be working all the time. Indeed, of course, it can't work all of the time. It's only going to work when we're ready to type something into a dialogue box or into a form or into a document. So the default setting is the function key twice, and that's what I use. OK, so I press function key on the keyboard twice and that invokes the dictation command. If you want to set it to use something different, you can just go here and it gives you a couple of other options. Maybe press the right command key or the left command key or even you can customize it. So you click on the customize and you can press whichever keys that you want to use to invoke that command. However, I use the default function function one after the other very quickly and that will bring up the dialog box. So now I've brought up a text edit window and this could be any document. You could be using pages, numbers, any text editing document, any form with a field that you want to type into can work for this functionality. The way, as I say, you invoke the situation uh, of dictation for me is press function twice. So I'm going to tap that on my keyboard right now just to show you what happens. And you see this window comes up and as I speak, it dictates and types in everything that I'm saying. Full stop. New line. Even when I say new line, it will keep typing in the same line until I finish my dictation, full stop. I then press the function button, full stop. And now I've, after I've pressed that function button, it's now stopped trying to listen to me. You probably heard the ding ding 
of the uh, Mac interface telling me that it stopped listening essentially and even though I've asked it to go to a new line it will do that only after you've pressed that function button to, uh, to stop the dictation so when you're dictating it gives you one long line but you can tell the software when to start a new line when to start a new paragraph and a variety of other different um, controls for the text that you're dictating to the system so you can have all capitals for instance uh, numbers numerals and let me show you a couple of those features right now okay so I'm going to hit the function key twice and let's show you a couple of the things and also I'll be linking at the end to a web page that shows you all of the control features that you will need to know so let's try a couple numeral one two three full stop new paragraph new paragraph caps on this is the title of a book so I want it to look like this so you can see there that it's actually made it a title case sentence by me asking it to be caps on let's try another couple of things no space on Jonathan at sign this website dot com So you see there that if you say no space on it will not put any spaces between the words and it allows you to type in names and uh, email addresses website addresses that kind of thing which is perfect for that what you would then say to turn that function off is no space off if you've stopped the dictation functionality by pressing the function key once more it just goes back to the default listening state so you might wonder how it can type in weird names and titles of things that are not necessarily in the dictionary I mean things like product names let's have a go and see how it caters for this and I'll show you why it works now I've just pressed it twice and I've had a single ding which means it doesn't work because I'm not in a window where I can type so let me go back to that window first I've just clicked to highlight that window and now I'll double click the function button new paragraph I want to write the word Elgato as this is a very popular product in the live streaming industry so what I want you to see is that it's typed in the word Elgato now that's not a normal word in a dictionary I can show you some others that are prevalent in my industry just to really show you how powerful this can be so here we go again new paragraph press sign is a brilliant product and works with X-Rite spectrophotometers full stop so there you see that press sign is written in a very strange way and so is x -Rite. now they are both products that really do exist I've taught the Mac dictation system how to use these so let's move on to the next screen and I'll show you how to teach it new words so here we are and the clue is that you go into the contacts screen so the max dictation will look at things that like you, the names in your contacts book and it will look at a variety of other things some, sometimes things that might be in your calendar but the contacts book is a really major area that it will actually look for words that are a little unusual so that when you say somebody's name it types it in correctly so you can use this functionality to add words that are unusual so what I do in the contacts app is create a group called the dictation words and in that group I then type in the words that are really out of normal 
things that are relevant to the industry that I work in. So for instance, we've got ECAM. So if I said ECAM, then that's not a normal word in terms of the dictionary, but Mac dictation would write that correctly. And we can see some of the other ones that I've already mentioned. Well, press sign is in another group, so that's why it's recognized that. But look, we've got the X right one there as well. And I just literally um, type it in as a name. So if I go here, I put it as a company name and just put it in and say for Mac dictation in the notes. So now I know why I've got it there. So the Mac dictation would spell all of these words correctly. So as it's kind of a chocolatey time of year, let's have a look and see if it can spell this one correctly for me. So we're back to the text document. Let's try it out. New paragraph. I would like some lint chocolates for Christmas this year, full stop. And look, it's spelt lint correctly. OK, so that's how you teach it. One little tip is if you add words into the contact list, give it a little bit of time. One of the things that the Mac dictation does require is an Internet connection because it looks at the uh, Internet for the correction and the dictation words. So you can use the same controls on your iOS devices. So you can dictate to your iPhone or your iPad and it uses the same punctuation controls that you use here, as well as things like new line, new paragraph and that kind of thing. You'll see the breadth of things that you can ask the Mac to type on the list that I'll show you in the next screen. Here we are on the Apple website. This is the support website and it's a support website document and it will give you a list of the things that you can say within the dictation in order for it to get your words right and your punctuation correct. You can see you can add things like ampersand, at sign, which is what I used a bit earlier, and uh, new line, these commands here, new paragraph, that kind of thing. Capitalization commands, I demonstrated that as well. Mathematical signs, um, dollar signs, cent signs, so those kind of things are there. And you can even ask it to get a couple of uh, icons, emote icons uh, there as well. So you'll see that's a fairly comprehensive list. But I believe there's even more than that. You might worth it might well be worth just trying to see what uh, what you can get it to do for you. The other great thing about using uh, dictation is it means you don't have to try and reach for your keyboard. And if you don't know how to spell something, then the Mac generally will. So so long as you speak clearly to it and make sure you're on the internet, then it'll spell your words and your specialist words correctly, saving you an enormous amount of time and effort. I hope you found that useful and uh, it's one of the things that I use all of the time in my business. Saves me hours, truly hours, and uh, makes typing and dictating and responding to emails so much easier. And quite commonly, rather than typing things in, you can say the things and it becomes much more fluid off of the tongue rather than trying to type things in and being too slow to keep up with your own thoughts. Anyway, without any further ado, I hope you found this useful and I look forward to helping you again in the near future. Thanks a lot. Let's see you soon.